Okay, welcome to Physics once again. This is coming to you live from Kansas, from Scout Camp. Today, let's take a look at what we're doing today. Looks like we're in... See, today is the 24th, so the 24th we are supposed to be finishing Chapter 5 essentially today, so we can, uh, well, almost finishing Chapter 5, not quite. So we'll be in Section 5.6, Section 5.7, and we'll finish Chapter, we'll kind of polish it off tomorrow and start Chapter 6, getting close to that first exam. I know you're excited for that. So let's take a look at 5.6 and let's learn some new physics. Of course, last time we um, were talking about systems that where energy is conserved, um, pushing a car up a hill and rolling a car down a hill, just simple mechanical things. And uh, the energy conservation equation, which says that the common, the, the um, sum of all the initial energies has to equal the sum of all the final energies. Fairly straightforward stuff, but still uh, mathematically can get a little bit dicey because there's so many things to think about. Hopefully that went well for you. And now we will move on to wherever we're moving on to. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, where are we moving on to? getting here eventually, 5.6. Oh, we did power already. Why did we do power? Oh, that's because I'm on the wrong day. So we need to finish this up. So we talked about power, which is just energy divided by time. It's kind of like the velocity of energy. And I think we did all these examples, so we should be good to go. Did sp speedboat power we did, energy work in the vertical jump, where we learned that you can calculate the height of a jump or the height of some kind of um, object that's in, a, in um, a ballistic path. And the work done by a varying force, where we learned that it's the work that is done by a varying force is calculated by taking the area under a curve of the force and the distance. So it looks like we've covered everything in Chapter 5, and it's time to start Chapter 6. can't remember if we looked at all the homework, I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. So, yeah, here's the part where we were counting boxes. All right, so now we're at the end of the chapter, and that's great. Um, let's actually take a look really quick at the multiple choice questions that we assigned you for this chapter 5. See that chapter 6 only has three assignments. We should be able to crank through that pretty quickly. Um, so I have a height of a playground slide. Um, will the length of the slide, whether it has bumps, make any difference in the final speed of the children playing on it, right? Um, so that, that could be a, a trick question because in part B you see that it's uh, frictionless um, in part A. So part A is frictionless, part B is, part A is frictionless, part B is not frictionless. So friction plays a role there. Um, Discuss whether any work is being done by the following agents, whether work is positive or negative. Now remember that positive work on a system is considered to be work that adds energy to that system. So if it's making the system go faster or making it warmer or whatever else, that's positive energy. If the system itself is losing energy, then the system is doing the work and that work is negative work being done on the system. So that is work being energy being taken out of the system. So you've got to be careful with those. Those are, um, at first they seem pretty easy, but they can easily be tricky. Um, <clears throat> Hunter kicks a football. Is he doing work? Remember that work is all about force and distance. And you just got to think, you know, when you're kicking a football, is there a force done over a distance? So on and so forth. Um, so we have a spring connected vertically from the ceiling. The weight is displaced towards its equilibrium position at least. 
and we want to know is the total uh, will the total mechanical energy of the system be conserved? Um, and we're and we're neglecting air resistance. Um, we want to know if it's going to be conserved, yes or no. Uh, the thing that you have to ask is, is there any other way for the energy to leave the system? Right? Is, it, is there a possible way for the energy to leave the system? And I think that there probably is, but I, I'm not going to talk about it, I guess. But anyway, um, net work done on a particle is zero. Which of the following statements must be true? So if the net work done is zero, what else must be zero? It's either the force or the distance is zero, right? Or the sum of the forces is zero, or so on and so forth. You've got things to think about when you're talking about the total work or the net work being done. Car accelerates uniformly from rest. When does the car require the greatest power? You have to think of it as when, it, when does it require the greatest force, really, or the greater, over the greatest distance, because force times distance is work. Um, is energy, and I also have to think of it terms, in terms of time because you've got the power here is over time, so it's an inverse relationship with time. So the longer the time that it's doing that it's receiving force, the, the lower the power for that same force. So you've got a direct relationship with force and distance, an inverse relationship with time to get greatest power. Mark and, Dave, and and this one's kind of an interesting one when we think of the boxer as well. Remember back to our boxer analogy. Um, what is really important when you're boxing is to not have a great amount of power um, translated into your head, for example. And so if you get a lot of force in a little bit of time, you get a big number or a small number, which is a big number, right? You get a lot of power. Whereas if you have that same amount of force over a longer time, then that power goes down, which is another reason that boxers faint when they get hit. They they turn their head away from away from the the punch, or they or they roll with the punches, as they say, right? If they roll with the punch, then the force of the glove on their face lasts longer. It also is a smaller force, so it's a smaller force and it lasts longer. So you get a smaller number over a bigger number, which of course is a smaller power, and that is huge. It makes a huge difference in boxing, turning or rolling with the punches. Uh, so, what's the difference between lifting a block straight up from the ground of the truck or sliding the block up the ramp as far as work is concerned? Do they do different amounts of work? Um, do they, I mean, why, what, I mean, it's really, it's really a trick question here. Are they doing the same amount of work? Are they doing different amounts of work? Does it mean that one person has a more difficult job than the other? Um, those things are not necessarily all the same questions, so you have to be careful with those. Um, remember that for, that it's um, that work is equal to force times distance, where the force and the distance are in the same direction. So if you're sliding it up a ramp, which direction is your force? And which direction is your movement? And are they both going to be bigger numbers, smaller numbers, whatever else? Um, and the same thing with the lifting the block. You have to think about those things. The speed of the particle is doubled. What happens to its kinetic energy? So remember, the equation for kinetic energy has a velocity in it, but that velocity is not necessarily just regular velocity. Something's happening to it mathematically. We have a truck that has twice the mass of a car and we're moving at the same speed. How do we discover, how do we compare the kinetic energies? Um, so mass is also in the equation for kinetic energy, but it has a different role, it plays a different role than the, um, than the velocity does. So that is the end of chapter five. Um, let's see. We need to start chapter six, of course, because that is going to be due on Wednesday as well. So we have uh, homework five, multiple choice and conceptual questions due Wednesday, and homework 6.1 due Wednesday. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video recording and start another one here in a second for the beginning of chapter six.